Thrombolytic therapy is the use of drugs known as lytics or clot busters to dissolve blood clots that have suddenly blocked your major arteries or veins and pose potentially serious or life-threatening consequences. For the therapy to be effective, it must be started as soon as possible, before permanent damage has occurred. The duration of a treatment session is determined by the underlying cause. A session can last anywhere between 60 minutes typical for a heart attack and up to 48 hours often in the case of deep venous thrombosis or DVT. This therapy has the potential to reverse or mitigate the negative effects of atherosclerosis of the brain's arteries or stroke. When heart arteries are clogged or heart attack. In cases of pulmonary embolism. And in leg vein occlusion or DVT. There are mainly two types of thrombolytic therapy used in clinical practice. First systemic thrombolytic therapy and catheter-directed thrombolytic therapy. Let's see, what is systemic thrombolytic therapy? Systemic thrombolysis is a procedure used to treat heart attacks, strokes, and pulmonary embolism. The clot-busting medication will be administered via an intravenous line, which is usually inserted into a visible vein in your arm. Performed in an intensive care unit at your bedside while your heart and lung functions are monitored. The drug travels through the bloodstream until it reaches the clot. Because of dilution, the drug's effect may be diminished or higher doses may be required, which significantly increases the risk of bleeding. Catheter-directed thrombolytic therapy dissolves blood clots and is a non-surgical treatment for acute deep venous thrombosis. These clots usually form in your leg, thigh, or pelvis, but they can travel anywhere. If a DVT travels to your lungs which is, called a pulmonary embolism or PE, it can cause shortness of breath, chest pain, and in extreme cases, death. This treatment is administered in a catheterization lab or a radiology suite. A team of doctors and nurses collaborate to deliver clot-dissolving medications known as thrombolytics directly to the clot via a thin plastic tube catheter. You will be given relaxation medication. The treatment area will be numbed by your vascular surgeon. A thin plastic tube is inserted into a vein through a skin puncture, usually in the groin, neck, or behind the knee. Medicine is infused into the clot via the tube. A small machine is inserted through the tube if necessary to break up or suction the clot. A narrowed area in the vein is frequently discovered, which may have caused the clot to form. Now, what are thrombolytics and how they are administered in ER? These are some drugs used to perform thrombolytic therapy. Clot-busting drugs, also known as thrombolytic agents, are the most commonly used. Aminas, streptokinase, TPA, tenecteplase, and urokinase, etc. We will learn about the doses of each one in detail. Depending on the circumstances, a doctor may decide to inject clot-busting drugs through a catheter into the access site. However, doctors are more likely to insert a longer catheter into the blood vessel and guide it near the blood clot to deliver medications directly to the clot. Doctors use radiologic imaging to see if the blood clot is dissolving during both types of thrombolysis. If the clot is small, the procedure may take several hours. However, treatment for a severe blockage may be required for several days. The adult dose of streptokinase for AMI is 1.5 million U and 50 milliliters of 5% dextrose in water given for over 60 minutes. Allergic reactions force the termination of many infusions before a therapeutic dose can be administered. The second is Altaplace. Altaplace can be administered in an accelerated infusion, 1.5 hours, using 50 mg and 100 mg vials reconstituted with sterile water to 1 mg per milliliter. Accelerated infusion of Altaplace for AMI consists of a 15 mg 4 bolus followed by 0.75 mg per kg, up to 50 mg, for over 30 minutes, and then 0.5 mg per kg, up to 35 mg, for over 60 minutes. The maximum total dose is 100 mg for patients weighing more than 67 kg. This is the most common Altaplace infusion parameter used for acute myocardial infarct. Retaplace. First, reconstitute two 10-unit vials with sterile water, 10 milliliters, to 1 unit per mil. 
The adult dose of Retaplace for AMI consists of two 4 boluses of 10 units each, there is no weight adjustment. The first 10 unit 4 bolus is given over 2 minutes, 30 minutes later, a second 10 unit 4 bolus is given over 2 minutes. Administer normal saline flush before and after each bolus. Now, let's see doses of Tenecteplase. To reconstitute Tenecteplase, mix the 50 mg vial in 10 ml sterile water that is 5 mg per ml. Tenecteplase is administered in a 30 to 50 mg 4 bolus over 5 seconds. The dosage is calculated on the basis of the patient's weight as follows. For a patient weighing less than 60 kg, 30 mg equivalent to 6 ml should be administered, for 60 to 70 kg, 7 ml, for 70 to 80, 8 ml, for 80 to 90, 9 ml and for patients weighing more than 90 kg, 10 ml equivalent to 50 mg should be administered over 5 seconds. The following are absolute contraindications to using fibrinolytic and STEMI. Intracranial bleeding in the past, within 3 months, you'll have an ischemic stroke, aortic dissection is suspected. Bleeding diathesis or active bleeding, excluding menses. Within 3 months, there have been significant closed head or facial injuries, uncontrolled severe hypertension which is unresponsive to emergency therapy. Now, what we should expect after thrombolytic therapy? Treatment will usually reverse or lessen your symptoms. Thrombolytic therapy, on the other hand, is not always effective and may fail to remove the blood clot, especially if treatment is delayed. Even if the clot dissolves, the affected tissues, your heart, brain, lungs, or leg, may be irreversibly harmed as a result of chronic blood flow restriction. Your vascular surgeon will evaluate your symptoms again after treatment. To check for any remaining blood clot, imaging tests that is CT scan, echocardiography, arteriogram, or venogram may be required. Your vascular surgeon may recommend additional treatment, such as a minimally invasive procedure, depending on the underlying reason of clot formation that is balloon angioplasty, stenting, or open surgery.